Hey folks, it's Marvin Cash, the host of the Articulate Fly, and we're back with another Texas Hill Country Fishing Report with Greg Wielander of Upstream on the Fly. How you doing, Greg? Well, hi Marvin. I'm I'm not too bad. You know, um, we've had a weather change though, so uh, it is it's gotten cold. Um, you know, of course, uh, cold not like cold in other parts of the country. Um, we had a, a cold front blow in uh, first part of this week. And, um, and and it's our strongest cold front of the year. Um, we're kind of didn't even make it out of the 40s at noon today. So it was, uh, I think a high was going to be in the 50s, but we had a good strong north wind and um, it's making the wind chill up there. So um, had a couple trips coming up this week and uh, doesn't look like the clients want to go sit outside in the cold weather. So um, doesn't look like a lot of fishing as far as guiding this week. Um, so up until this weekend, it, it's been consistent. You know, our fall pattern that I've reported on um, has continued on for the last two weeks and we're going to start to see some changes. Um and it was uh, more temperature driven. Um, the amount of rain we had coming into this front, I think we probably had about a half inch. You know, the rivers might have grabbed a little bit of it, um, but but not not nearly enough to, to really mess up the water clarity for the long term. So that that should be okay. But the uh, the light nighttime lows, you know, first part of this week here are going to be getting down in the twenties in the outlying areas of, of the hill country. So. Um, what concerns me, though, is the uh, the low highs we're going to be having. So what I mean by that is, you know, when you look at the seven-day forecast long term, and Austin proper, of course, is a little different than, say, if you did Lano or if you did uh, any of the outlying areas, maybe go over towards Bastrop for a good city um, to report on for the lower Colorado. So um, when you have high temperatures, Barely hitting 60, that means the majority of the day is going to be in the 50s. Um, you know, maybe even the first half of the morning is going to be in the 40s or 30s. The water temperatures are going to start to drip, you know, dip down. And we've been very fortunate that, you know, up until this past weekend, our water temperatures have still been in the 70s. So what does all this mean for, for an angler? Um, presentation is going to have to slow down. So, as the water temperatures cool down, the fish's metabolisms are going to start to slow down um, because they are cold-blooded uh, fish, right? And um, they're not like trout, you know, trout fishing, which uh, which in this part of the country is the lower Guadalupe, below Canyon Lake. You know, that's that's going to be ideal for the trout fishery. And uh, however, the river there is, is still fairly low. So um, the flow rate's a little bit low, but let's get back on the, on the warm water bite. You know, um, what, what I'm going to say is, um, you know, the, the lower Colorado River is the water clarity is going to be perfect. You know, the, the water level's still low, which is great. However, the, you know, with the water temperature's changing, um, you know, we're going to have to come off top water. Okay. Um, and we're going to have to, Start looking at more creature baits, you know, whether that be crayfish imitations or or just uh, any sort of sculpin variants or, or or when I say creature, you know, it could be just some articulated um, fly that's, you know, kind of crawfish driven colors, you know, oranges, blacks, olives, browns. And you're going to want to slow the presentation down. Because the uh, the fish won't be as active chasing chasing the bait like they were with the shad earlier in this fall, um, so yeah, that's that's kind of what I've got to say about the hill country right now. There's a change that's happened, and uh, you're going to see that over the next week. Um, if we start to see some uh, temperatures warming up um, after this week. Like when you start seeing the 70s and maybe even 80s, then of course um, that's going to help help the bite. But keep in mind though is uh, take a thermometer along and, and check your water temperatures. The bass fishing will still be okay as long as we're in the 60 degree temperature range. But um, as we get in the low 60s and in the 50s, um, the bite's going to definitely come off. I mean, it's going to come off in, in a big way. So. Um, Watch your cold fronts. Try to 
try to catch a three or four days after that front. And as long as it's, it's warming up, um, you know, in the seventies and, and, and pushing eighties and the bite will come back around. So, um, Marvin, that's, that's about what I have as we start starting off the month of December, um, here in, here in the Hill Country. So it's a, definitely a big change. Yeah, absolutely. And I imagine too, it's uh, probably time to crack out the sink tips and the sinking lines. Yes. You know, um, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, this time of year, the, the sinking lines, sinking tips is, uh, definitely on my rod. Um, and I try to get away from the floating lines, you know, um, because even in your shallower rivers, your, your fish will start looking for the deeper areas. Um, and they're also be a little bit tighter to the cover. So, um, just depends on what body of water you're fishing. Um, a sink tip comes into play. And, and when you use the sink tip, you don't have to go with the, the heavy dumbbell or heavy weighted flies because your sink tip will do the work for you and take that fly down, which makes it a lot easier than trying to cast a, a heavier fly on a sink tip and, and shorten up your leaders. You know, um, when you are fishing a sink tip, you want to start going down like a three foot leader. Um, and I prefer fluorocarbon over nylon for that leader. And the reason for that is because it's going to fall quicker than a nylon leader. And you want your fly to kind of stay at the same fall rate as your, uh, as your sink tip or your sinking line. Yeah, absolutely. I think that and probably fishing either clouser style or jig hooks to not hang up on the bottom too much. is probably the, the other only other trick of the trade I can think of. Well, that's, that's exactly it. You know, Marvin, um, I generally try to be selective on my flies, um, so that they don't get hung up because when you throw in a sink tip, you're almost, you know, guaranteed you're going to get stuck a time or two. Um, but there's a saying, if you're not getting hung up, then you're, you're not getting where the fish are going to be hanging out. Um, and they will be hanging out lower in the water column and they'll be hanging out tight into the structure, whether it be rocks or, or, uh, or, or lay downs or logs. So, um, the brush, you know, they'll, they'll be tight to all that cover. Yeah, absolutely. But, yeah. yeah. And I hope things warm up for you. And, you know, folks, we, uh, we love questions on the articulate fly. You can email them to us or send them to us on our Facebook or Instagram page. If we read your question, I'll send you some articulate fly swag and you're going to get into a drawing uh, for something cool that uh, Greg pulls together from all the great brands that he reps at the end of the season. Before I let you hop, Greg, why don't you let folks know where they can find you so they can book you and fish with you on the other side of this cold spell? Sure. Um, my website, upstreamonthefly.com. And then you can also find me over at Instagram or Facebook as Upstream on the Fly. Well, that's great. And, you know, folks, don't be discouraged. Uh, by this cold weather. It's a great opportunity to get out, maybe try some new techniques, learn a little bit more about where the fish are. So just bundle up, maybe take a thermos of coffee or some hot soup and get out there and catch a few. Tight lines, everybody. Tight lines, Greg. Tight lines, Marvin. Tight lines, Marvin.